How's it going people? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you the entire process of how I created this cleaver sword. The original concept of the cleaver is by artist Matthias Trabold Rehren. I guess if that's the correct pronunciation. I'll be using Blender for modeling, but you can use any other modeling software because the techniques will be the same. We then be sculpting the details inside ZBrush and finally, we will texture it inside Substance Painter. So without any further delays, let's get going. So as you can see, I'm starting with the basic cube and then resizing it and tracing the basic shape by just extruding it and matching the vertices according to the reference. I'm trying to make the blade as precise as possible by adding edge loops and giving it more vertices to work on. For the sharp edge, I am just connecting the vertices and then giving it a shape I wanted. When you get to understand the softwares and techniques, you will come to know that uh, for the most of the assets uh, which you make, you are just repeating the steps. You can always level up with your modeling skills by adding a bit higher level of details in your current model than you did for your previous model to see if you can reach that level of detail. Here I have added a subdivision modifier to see the edges which I have to crease in order to retain the same shape. For the wooden handle, again I am just uh, taking a cube and then repeating the steps I used before. That is uh, resizing and extruding the cube and then tracing the shape. You don't have to be total accurate when creating an object. Just the basic shape is good for the starting point and when you add a subdivision modifier, it quickly gives you the shape you wanted and then further refine your mesh by deleting extra edges from it. For the hole at the corner of the sword, I again took a cube and place it according to the reference and then using a boolean modifier on the blade of the sword and I am cutting the shape using the cube. Then I am completing the edge flow in the mesh by connecting the edges. It is necessary to have a nice edge flow in your 3D model for the UV to take place more precisely. Then again, I am selecting the edges I wanted to crease. and adding a subdivision modifier. After that, you can see I got a nice shape of the hole. Again, I am just tracing the shape of the hole by moving the vertices and according to the reference. Then I just added both the mesh in a separate collection for low poly and a high poly 
and exporting the high poly as FVX format for the sculpting inside ZBrush. In ZBrush, I have subdivided the mesh couple of times so that I have some more poly to work on. I am using a trim dynamic brush with a square alpha to smooth the crisp edges on the blade and also to give the damage effect on the edges. If you are using ZBrush for the first time and don't know how to do things, I recommend you to watch hour long videos of artists from different studios who post tutorials of ZBrush in the official Pixelogic YouTube channel and you can definitely learn a lot of cool tricks from them and also to understand the workflow they use i'll be giving the link in the description so you can definitely check that out on the flat surface i am using a clay build up brush to give it a feel of depth and bumps For the cracks to look more precise, you should also have a digital tablet. The one I am using is a Wacom one tablet of standard size. You can take uh, several references to see how bumps and cracks occurs in the sword or on a metal. There is always a thing when creating a game asset is that they should not be fully clean. There is always a variation in surface like having bumps, cracks, dirt or other little details to make it look more natural instead of factory made. I have just used the clay buildup and trim dynamic brush for the most of the part. Here I am using a smooth brush to just smooth the cracks and bumps a bit. I have also enabled the mirror mode for the modification to occurs on the other side too. You can always play with the brushes to get the results you want and it's always a good practice I think to know the software more by just playing around and tweaking the settings. Here I am just using a standard brush with a square alpha and Z sub enabled to make uh, those cracks at the edges of the blade. I'm just tracing out the cracks and then using a trim dynamic brush to give it a more depth. In the sculpting stage, you can add as much detail as you want. Here I'm not following the concept fully but making my own iterations. Sculpting is a really a cool part where you can add little details like bump and cracks and all that stuff and make the high poly as much in detail as possible. I skipped the UV part but I can explain you now. For the UV part I just reset the transformation and then did a smart UV unwrap of both the blade and the handle and then Blender did a great job in doing the UV part for me. To improve sculpting, I suggest sculpting face portraits as it helps you to get control over the uh, brushes of uh, ZBrush and also when and which brush to use for a particular type of detail. Also a thing while working with ZBrush 
is that you should always save your data after uh, several minutes uh, of work just in case if uh, zbrush crashes or your system hangs uh, the save system in zbrush is pretty different because whenever you save the project after saving it for the first time it gives you the choice to uh, again save it uh, whether with the same name or maybe with the different name so it means the save window pops up every time you save the project i'm just adding more extra details wherever i'm feeling necessary for swords and axe kind of weapons you should always add those extra cracks and and that damaged effect so it should give a, a feel of uh, that it was used by some warrior in a battle and had been through a lot of wars so that's the reason it has those uh, cracks and all that stuff on it Although I could do the sculpting part inside Blender because it also gives you the option to sculpt and the sculpting tools are pretty decent in Blender uh, but still as an industry standard I choose ZBrush uh, so that the main process does not violate maybe in the uh, later videos I could demonstrate Blender sculpting tools to sculpt inside it and then give a brief comparison of both the sculpting tools of uh, Blender and ZBrush You can use the same techniques to the majority of uh, the assets like uh, swords or axe kind of weapons or even if you are making uh, uh, rocks of uh, different kinds uh, um, or maybe assets which require woodish look. You can clearly see over here how I am managing the flow of uh, uh, that damaged effect in the blade as I'm not making it too much damaged and also not uh, um, making it almost came out uh, right from the factory. So you need to understand that in games which require uh, realistic graphics, your approach to any game asset for that particular kind of uh, game uh, should be the same. Uh, that is a certain amount of randomness uh, to the surface or even maybe variation in roughness and all kind of st uh, stuff should be there on that asset. Here I just use the same clay builder brush to first create that damaged effect on the blade or on the edge of the blade uh, and then using a trim dynamic brush I'm further modifying that damaged effect Then just uh, using the same default uh, standard brush, I am further adding more minute details and using the trim dynamic brush to broaden up the crack and uh, giving it more uh, a realistic look.
the best thing about zbrush for me is that the modifications are in, uh, in indestructible uh, that is you can go back and forth and do the changes again and again if you don't like the previous one Once I'm happy with the blade, I then started sculpting the wooden handle. I'm again using the same technique as in the blade, that is using a trim dynamic brush to sculpt the edges and make it look less like factory made. With the trim dynamic brush only, I am giving it a wooden look. You can see here how I am breaking the smoothness of the entire handle and trying to make it look like a wood with just the sculpting part. Wood sometimes is pretty difficult to sculpt as it has uh, so much of minute details to add on uh, like those wooden circles and wooden grains and uh, those torn pieces within a wooden asset uh, so the 80% of the work is done inside uh, sculpting and then using texturizing uh, to make out those details pop up For the wooden grain, I am using a damped standard brush with a pointy circular alpha and Z sub enabled and then making long random lines on the handle to give it a more wood-ish look. I have disabled the mirroring so that I can have the grains look more natural instead of uh, handmade i have increased the size to make uh, bigger cracks on the handle so that it should have a feel that it was used over and over again The more you practice sculpting, the more you can understand of how and when to use the brushes of uh, ZBrush. I'm trying different alpha in here to see how they're gonna impact uh, while uh, sculpting the wood and uh, also to explore the pre-existing library of the alphas. The more you focus on creating little little details in your asset, the more it's gonna look real and promising.
Once I'm happy with the sculpting part, I then export the high poly to give it get it ready for the final bake. Now inside Substance Printer, I have imported the low poly mesh and baked the mesh maps using the high poly mesh with anti-aliasing having 4x4. I have drag drop and iron forged old smart material onto the sword and open the folder to tweak the uh, color settings of the material to match it with the color of the reference. I have opened my pure rep window in the side and using an eyedropper tool I am picking up uh, the color directly from the reference as close as possible. Then on the edge layer I opened the black mask and turn off the metal edge wear and instead of that I add the curvature map to the mesh and by adjusting the color of the layer by making it slightly lighter than the base color of the sword and adjusting the curvature by playing with the sliders. I then drag drop a wooden beach wine smart material for the handle and then changing the base color to a dark brownish color. In the wood uh, fiber layer, I reduce the amount of uh, wood pattern to slightly less so that it does not look odd. Then I copied the base wood layer and place it above all the layers and added a curvature generator to the mask and then as usual just playing with these sliders and uh, to get that uh, wear look on the edges of the handle and also uh, adjust its uh, color to slightly lighter brown to make it pop out. And uh, finally I took a paint layer and painted some nails on the handle for the finish. So I think you enjoyed the video and I'll be coming up with more videos where I will try to share my knowledge of how to create game assets. Till then, I'll see you in the next video.